questions. So you have to sell ideas to people, is that right? Yes. You know what WIFM means? It's an acronym. No, I haven't heard it. It means what's in it for me. And that's probably one of the greatest things you'll ever learn about selling. You've got to communicate that what you've got is going to benefit the person you're trying to sell it to. So you'll never buy a, a car unless you know what's in it for you. You want a certain type of car, and so you've got to get that want. You've got to find that niche. Now, your name's Tristan. Of course. Tell me what you believe about the afterlife. Uh, okay. Um, to be like completely frank, or how frank should I be? Very frank. Very frank. All right. Since you asked, I will oblige. Um, I, until recently, was very hardcore, like, annoying atheist. And some type of revelation, I guess would be the appropriate word, uh, some, some type of occurrence in my life. I essentially saw the order of, of, of life. I saw the order in, in plants. I saw the order in leaves. I saw the order in animals. I saw the order in man. I saw the order in nature. I saw the order. And there's undoubtedly an order to the world. There's, there's some type of higher power. So I'm pretty full agno right now. You're pretty full what? Agno, like agnostic. So Tristan, mm -hmm. do you think there's an afterlife? Uh-huh. You don't know? No. Brittany, do you think there's an afterlife? Yes. And why do you think that? Because look around us, like how do we think the way we think, like if there's not something spiritually inside of us. So you believe in God's existence? I do, but I don't believe it's just one guy. We all narrow it down to one person, but I feel, feel like it's much bigger than that. Uh, it's like 10 of them? No, it's not, it's not even a person. I feel like it's just a being. Just a being? Yeah. Like us? Yeah, basically. We're human beings, we're aware of our existence. I think that's a word, what, what the word being means. Yeah. What about the Bible? What do you think it's of the claims of the Bible? It's super interesting. I'm reading it now. I, I, I don't know that much about it, but I'm, I'm dipping my, my toes metaphorically into the Bible, if that makes sense, because there is, I notice there are a lot of truths in it, uh, not even necessarily like uh, historical truths, but more of the moral truths in the Bible. And that's what's really, uh, that's almost what's bringing me out of hardcore annoying atheism. Because it just it just makes sense. Oh, do you know what the Bible says about death? What the cause of death is? It says the wages of sin is death. Have you ever heard that Bible verse? I think I have. I have. Yeah. It's wages. God pays us the wages of death. He yeah. says you're worthy of the death sentence. Right. You're going to get capital punishment. And you're going to die. Yeah. The soul that yeah. sins, it shall die. Right. Yeah. And that's that's well. I mean, that's that's what's interesting about it because typically people who do sin fall to, fall to vice and they fall to vice like Jewish like really brainy guy I think his name was Foucault and essentially like he thought he was above sin and he thought the role was to live in hedonism and in pleasure and go figure he dies of AIDS in a bathhouse in San Francisco because you know that's that he, he he's a sinner and there are consequences there to are sin. There are consequences to sin. I think we're going to get away with it. We're like moths to a flame, but look at the base of any flame. There's a lot of dead moths. Right. Um, now, why don't you believe in one God? It's, it's, uh, it seems strange that there will be multiple gods. I don't believe there's multiple gods, per se, but I do believe it's just much bigger than that, than just one person creating everything and like creating all existence. I feel like we just want to have a better understanding of it, but we honestly can't. But there's always going to be mystery in the world, but we can't really comprehend it. I'm going to see if I can give you a whiff em. Okay. I'm going, to, I'm going to make it, see if I can make you desire something. Do you consider yourself to be an educated person? Yeah. I would say, yeah. What's the world's biggest selling book of all time? Biggest selling book of all time? Is it like... Romeo and Juliet? No. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's the Bible. The Bible? Oh, okay. It's, it's left everything else in the dust, Harry Potter and all those books. Oh. Are you familiar with the famous story of the rich young ruler that ran to Jesus, knelt down and said, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Are you familiar with that? No. It's very famous. How would you answer that question? What should I do to inherit eternal life? Now, here comes the whiffum. I'm going to see if I can make you... Um, really earnest in finding out the answer to that question. Over 600,000 people this year in America will die of cancer. 600,000. 8.2 million 
worldwide will die of cancer. They, they, won't just get, they won't just get the disease, they'll actually die from it. So I'm going to give you a scenario. You go to the doctor because there's an, a lump under your armpit. You say, doctor, this is really, really painful. He says, after looking at it, this is lymph node cancer. It spreads throughout your body. You've got two weeks to live. We can't do anything for you. Just give you some medication to help the pain. The side effects, but I'm sorry, you've got two weeks. So you go home. You're not thinking about making money. You're not thinking about your career. You're not thinking about anything except the fact in two weeks you're going to be put in a box in the ground. And you're asking yourself that most sobering question, what should I do to inherit eternal life? How would you answer that question? Wow, that really makes you think. Do you think you deserve the death sentence for your sin? I mean, think of a, a judge in a court of law. He sees a heinous criminal right. murdered, murdered like four young ladies. He says, you've earned the death sentence. You've got an electric chair. This is your wages. This is what you've been paid for your deeds. Mm -hmm. Do you think you've earned the death sentence from God? Are you that bad? That's why I'm still agno, because I can't rationalize that yet. Because I've heard that same argument from a religious friend of mine. He's basically saying that to look at God as almost like a higher court. And the court of his reality, which is earth, his, his realm, which is also not his realm because it's the fallen realm. I'm trying, I'm trying to like make sense of it all. But you're making sense. Kind of, am I? Yeah, you are. Oh, I think you're doing a good job. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, so let me just let me share something with you. Okay. Um, we tend to judge ourselves by our own standards. Yeah. We think we're good people. Do you think you're a good person? I try my hardest to become, to be, I try really hard to be a good person. I try with all of my might to be a good person, but I don't know if I am a good person yet. Well, there's one way to find out. Well, let me tell you what Jesus said. This is, what, this is how he answered. He, he firstly told the man, he said, why are you calling me good? There's none good but God. And then he gave him five of the Ten Commandments. So we'll do the same with you. Do you think you're a good person? Yes. Well, there's none good but God, because the word good uh, means moral excellence in God's book. You'll find over 40 different definitions in the dictionary. Number one being morally excellent. So none of us are morally excellent. We're good in our own eyes, you know, but not in God's eyes because he's morally perfect. Good is, the Ten Commandments tell us what good is. When a man said Jesus was good, he gave him the Ten Commandments. So let's see how you do with the Ten Commandments. How many lies have you told in your life? A decent amount. Have you stolen something? Probably, yeah, I have. So you're a lying thief? Uh, yeah. So Jesus reproved the man of his understanding of the word good, and then he gave him five of the Ten Commandments. So let's say if you're a good person, how many lies have you told in your life? Thousands. Ever stolen something? Candy. <laughs> you see, if you steal something, the, the, uh, the value of that which you steal is irrelevant. If you open my wallet and take out one dollar, you're as much a thief as if you took out a hundred dollars. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. Okay, that's called blasphemy, taking God's holy name and using it as a cuss word to express disgust. Would you use your mother's name as a cuss word? No. Because you'd dishonor her. It'd be a horrible thing to do. So how much more do you dishonor God and anger him by taking his name in vain? In fact, the Old Testament gives the death sentence for blasphemy. Now, once again, I appreciate your patience with me and your honesty. Jesus said, whoever looks with lust has committed adultery in the heart. Have you ever looked with lust? Yes. So, I'm not judging you, Brittany, Brittany, but you've just told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer at heart, and you have to face God on Judgment Day. If He judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, you're going to be innocent or guilty? Guilty. Heaven or hell? Hell. Do you still think you're a good person as a lying thief? I'm trying to make a point. Right, I understand. Um, n do I still... Okay, one more time, sorry. Do you still think you're a good person? No, I don't think I'm a good person. Because a lying thief isn't a good person. Right. This is giving us a measuring rod. Mm -hmm. we, ha we have something to judge ourselves morally with. Right. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Uh, define in vain. Failing to give it due honor. Used it irreverently. OMG, using it as a cuss word, whatever. So I kind of disagree with that notion of using, like... When people say on God, I think typically they mean that with sincerity or when I, when like, oh my, like, I don't, I think that, that, that use of words is appropriate because they're not saying it in, in spite of God. They're saying it to enunciate the, the, the vigor or, or the intensity of the situation when people say God. Yeah, you slam your thumb on the door and you want to say it's or you want to use God's name in its place to express disgust, to, to illustrate the intensity of what you're going yeah. through. The ladies, the, 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 the actually adorable, huh? Like the yes. cool little fro. Me, hello. 
Oh, hello. 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 Howdy, howdy. You guys, you guys look nice today because it's a nice day to look nice. nice. Easily distracted by a woman. Yeah, now come back. Yeah. Right. Now, one to go. Jesus said, whoever looks at a woman and lusts for her mm -hmm. has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Right. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Oh, yeah. yeah we can't help it. We're we like can't. master the flame. That's our nature. Yeah. That's, um, logo. that's the sinful nature. Mm -hmm. So here's a summation. I'm not judging you, Tristan, but you've mm -hmm. just told me you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, mm -hmm. and an adulterate heart. Correct. Four of the Ten Commandments. So Correct. here's the big if. Mm -hmm. If God judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, mm -hmm. you're going to be innocent or guilty. Uh, do you have the date for Judgment Day? Because I might want to plan. I might want to plan for that a little bit more. Well, this is what we're trying to do. I'm trying to get you to plan for it. You know why God's holding off? He's uh, waiting for people like you. This is what the scriptures say. Oh yeah. God is not willing that any perish, but that all come to repentance. That's why He's holding off on Judgment Day. Yeah. So, so it is huh. coming. Back to the question. Yeah. If God judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, mm -hmm. you're going to be innocent or guilty. Now, I want to tell you something here. This is probably making you feel a little bit uncomfortable. No, and, not okay. Okay. I, I, I see what you're saying, though. But yeah, it's like you've been confronted with your own sins, and it's not a good feeling. But there's a reason for it. The reason for it is the same reason a doctor confronts a patient who doesn't think he's diseased right. with the symptoms. He says right. you're you're going to die in, there's, in there's, three weeks. It's, be, it's being objective because if if you can't be if you can't speak the truth no progress can be made. That's right. And the Bible says, speak the truth in love. So you may not realize this, but I love you. I care about you. And this is why I'm speaking these hard things. I, I, love, I love the fact that you're giving me this opportunity to be introspective of my like belief system. So that was yeah, cool. Well, I'm holding up a mirror. That's all so you can see yourself. You so you'd be guilty on judgment day. And the Bible says you'll end up in hell. All liars of their part in the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. All around us. I try not to lie, though, now. Yeah, they try that to a judge. I try not to rob banks anymore. Right. He's going to So what? So right. you shouldn't. Fair enough. So... Think about Hence your statute of limitations, but yeah. Yeah, there's no statute of limitations with God. Oh, no? No, absolutely oh, not. That sucks. But there's some good news in a minute, but I want to just lead up to okay. it. All this comes back to your image of God. We tend to make up a God in our image we feel comfortable with, a, a God that's kind of a little snuggly and doesn't get upset about sin and righteousness and judgment. Yeah. But think about this. Take a look up at that sun just for 10 seconds and it will blind you. Don't do it. No, okay. stop it. Oh. It'll blind you. Will, you'll you'll yeah. damage your eyes. Right. God created that. He knows what's in the middle of it. He created the atoms that hold it together. Every atom that holds that sun together right in the middle is created by God, designed by Him, and He's familiar with it. And He's familiar with you as a person. So I'm trying to enlarge your image of God. He's the creator of all things. Uh -huh. We have to stand before Him, and the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So does it the concern fear of God is the beginning of wait say that one more time, please? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Can I write that down really quick? No, in a minute. Okay, sorry. All right. <laughs> does it concern you that if you died today according to the Bible mm -hmm. and God gave you justice, you'd end up in hell? Not really, but but I think only because I'm retarded. I'm not fully developed yet. I'm not twenty five. I'm not I don't have the full brain capacity that men should have. Yeah. Well I'm trying to stir the brain a little. You should be concerned if you're standing on a freeway and a truck's heading for you. Mm -hmm. And I said, Tristan, are you concerned a truck's heading for you? And you says, Well I don't think my brain's come on, get off the road. And I'm Fair trying enough. to say you're in danger. Fair enough. Now tell me, what did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? Any idea? Uh, they, they had to like accept them as like the Lord and Savior and stuff like that, right? No. You you're kinda getting it right, but it's not right. Okay. Okay. <sighs> This is what the Bible tells us, okay. and I'll try and come back to your point here. Okay. God became a human being 2,000 years ago. The Bible says Jesus of Nazareth was God manifest in the flesh. What you need is something what the Bible calls righteousness. You, you need to be made right with God. You need to be justified. And do you know what God did so you could be made right with him? Any idea? Um, didn't he crucify himself? Like yeah. Crucified. yeah, God became a human being. Most people don't realize, because Jesus called himself the Son of God, the Son of Man, that he was God manifest in the flesh. In the Old Testament, the Bible prophesied, a body you prepared for me, and God filled the body as a hand fills a glove, and the scriptures say Jesus was the express image of the invisible God. God was manifest in the flesh, the Bible says. And the reason God became a perfect, sinless man was to give his life as a sacrifice on the cross. Now, maybe you know that, but you may not know this aspect. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. It's as simple as that. That's what happened on that cross. So God is up here, and he came down as... Jesus, One human being. Right? That's the idea. Perfect, sinless man. Right. The Bible says... Jesus, uh, right? This is what Old Testament said, a body you have prepared for me. God was manifest in the flesh. The scriptures say it was the express image of the invisible God. Mm -hmm. And the reason God became a human being was to provide a morally perfect sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That's why he cried out just before he died, it is finished, which is a weird thing to say just before you die, unless you're 
God in human form paying for the sins of the world. It's like being in a court of law and the judge pronounces you guilty and says, look, you're out of here because someone's paid your fine. Even though you're guilty, I can legally let you go because someone's paid your fine on your behalf. And God can legally dismiss our case, forgive our sins, commute our death sentence, and let us live forever all because of that suffering death and the resurrection of Jesus. What you have to do in response is repent of your sin. Say, God, I didn't realize sin was so serious. I was flippant about it. I'm really sorry for what I've done. I've blasphemed the name of the God that gave me life and loved ones and blue sky and eyesight and hearing and food and love and laughter, all those things. I've used your name as a cuss word. I'm so sorry. That's called contrition. And the Bible says contrition brings about repentance. That is, you, you realize how bad it is what you've done and you turn from it. And the second thing is you trust in Jesus, like you trust a parachute. If you're on a plane standing 10,000 feet up on the edge and you had no desire for a parachute, the way to give you a whiffum to show you what's in it for you is to hang you out the plane by your ankles for two seconds. When you come back and you'll say, give me that parachute, I need it. And what I've tried to do uh, with you today, Brittany, as lovingly as I can, is hang you out eternity by your ankles and say, when you die, it's a fearful thing. It's fearful to die, but after death, the judgment to stand before a holy God and everlasting damnation, to come under God's wrath for my sins would be horrific. So please think about this. Will you do that? Yes. And God can dismiss your case, forgive your sins, and legally commute your death sentence, let you live forever mm -hmm. because of the suffering death of Jesus Christ. Just before mm -hmm. Jesus died, he cried out, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. Then he rose from the dead, defeated death. It was not possible that death could hold him. Mm -hmm. And if you repent and trust in him, God will forgive your sins. Now, before you said accept Jesus, the Bible doesn't say accept Jesus. That's just modern verbalism, and it fills the church with false converts. People don't even truly repent. If they yeah, just no, yeah. Like, uh, that's, uh, that's, why I was, that's why I'm critical of most, most organized religions, specifically the Catholic Church, is because it's like, what good is saying what you say you are if you don't strive to the, to the moral ideals that, that, one should, that the Bible teaches. There's a lot of hypocrisy, and God knows about it. There's hypocrisy in the Catholic Church, hypocrisy in the, in the Protestant Church. We've got televangelists with bottomless collection bags, living lives of hypocrisy and prosperity, forgetting the poor, which the Bible says don't forget them. Anyway, God will handle them on Judgment Day. You won't be judging hypocrites, so look to yourself because every man will give an account of himself to God. So you need to repent of your sins. That is, say, God, I've blasphemed your name, didn't give it honor. I've lusted after a woman, looked mm -hmm. at pornography. Is that right? Uh, I don't watch pornography. Have you looked at pornography? I have before. Yeah, that's 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 sin. Have you had sex? Have you had sex before marriage? Uh, yeah, I have. So look, just to, just to remind you of your sins, you've admitted you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating, adulterer at mm -hmm. heart. Give me a clean heart. Now this is the miracle of conversion. Uh, God will give you a new heart with new desires so you love righteousness. You love that which is right. That's what happens in conversion. Yeah, righteousness is pretty cool. Like there is right and wrong in the world. Yeah. There is truth and there is, there is falsehoods. There is, objectively speaking, truths in the world. So Tristan, what I'm trying to do is what I do with you with a man on a plane who has to jump 10,000 feet. He's got no parachute on, he's not alarmed, he's not concerned. My big favor to him would be to hang him out the plane by his ankles for about five seconds. Say, okay, come back in, you'd say, give me the parachute. Yeah, that's what I've tried to do with you because I care about you. Oh, thanks. I try to hang you out eternity by your ankles just for a couple of minutes to say, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Better to fall on the face of the sun than to fall into the hands of the living God. This is deadly serious. Hell is real. Your life is the most precious thing you've got. And remember what Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? So will you at least think about what we've talked about? I definitely will. I definitely will. I can't say that I accept Jesus Christ my Lord. I can't say I'm that. I'm not asking you to do that. Okay. I'm saying God commands you to repent and trust in Jesus. I'll, I'll, it's, I'll it's definitely like, think about it. Like you'd see your kid brother on a highway, truck mm -hmm. heading for him, and you'd command him to get off the road. You wouldn't say, hey, when you got a minute, get off the road. You could die tonight. Right. 150,000 people die every 24 hours, Tristan. Right, so right. think about how precious your life is. I try my hardest not to die, though. So there's well, a Everybody does. It always yeah, comes. Yeah. It comes in a direction you don't expect it. Because at the moment, you're an enemy of God in your mind through wicked works. You use the name of the one who gave you life as a cuss word. Mm -hmm. He gave you eyes to see with, ears to hear good music, taste buds to enjoy good mm -hmm. food, blue sky, mm -hmm. friendship, love and laughter, mm -hmm. flowers, birds, trees, all these things. I just, I don't, God doesn't make sense to me logically. Like, I just, I can't conceptualize the okay here's proof of God do you want it uh, okay look at the building right in front of you 
Uh, this one here. Yeah. How do you know there was a builder? Because it exists. Yeah. Buildings don't build themselves. Right. When you look at a painting, how do you know there was a painter? Because it's painted. Yeah. Look at creation. It proves the creator. Flowers, birds, trees, sun, moon, stars, seasons, the eye. 137 million light sensitive cells in every eye. We, the genius of God's handiwork is all around us. So don't say I don't know of God. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of At God. At the same time, I have, I have an argument. but I, I, I Give don't, it to I me. Come on, give I it to me. To, I need to study for I have, I have to take a, like a quiz like in an hour. and I need okay, to, give, it, give me the argument real quick. Okay. And okay, well, there's a lot of them. But there's, well, I literally have like a bunch of scripture here that's like a contradiction. And if God, if God is an all-knowing, all-powerful, all all genius person why are there contradictions in the bible why does some of the bible s say things that aren't necessarily true why why uh, one like, question why, why at a time that book one question at a time so okay hey, let me answer the first one this is a bible verse mm -hmm. god has chosen foolish things to confound the wise mm -hmm. jesus said i thank you O father you have hid these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes he said, unless you become as a little child, you'll not enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. So God deliberately chose foolish sounding stories. Mm -hmm. Noah and the ark, Jonah and the big fish, mm -hmm. Joshua and the walls of Jericho, and, or donkey speaking to Balaam. That's so metaphorical, I believe, right? Oh, no, it's literal. Jesus said it's literal, and he chose those things. because Yeah, but let me explain why God okay. chose those things. Okay. Anyone who has any intellectual dignity mm -hmm. would never stoop to believe those silly stories. That's the wisdom of God. Mm -hmm. He's chosen the door of salvation to be very low. Unless you humble yourself and become as a little child, do not enter. Wow. Contradictions in the Bible. That's interesting. Yeah, it's wow. it's incredible. Mm -hmm. In this world where the rich what get... What scripture is that? It's uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter Corinthians. 1 and 2. 1 and 2. So, and then it's in the Gospels, Jesus said. He's hid these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Mm -hmm. So that's very important to remember. God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. Second thing is, I've been reading the Bible every day without fail for 45 years. Mm -hmm. Any mistakes I've found have been my mistakes mm. any contradictions can be answered if you read scripture with scripture mm. you know what a paradigm shift is uh, yeah I'm familiar with that well, let me give you one a guy got on a bus he was blind the man on the bus stood up and gave him a seat was that a good thing to do I think so yeah, it sounds like it but it was actually a very bad thing uh. he got fired because of it because he was the bus driver <laughs> that is a good joke no, it's not a joke it's a paradigm shift well it is a joke yeah. but the paradigm shift is you said it was a good thing information came along Oh, that was a bad thing. Oh, wow. And so wow. we've got our own thoughts about God, and God wants to give us information right. that changes our minds, give us this paradigm shift. The right. Bible says, yeah. my people are destroyed through lack of information. Now, I've given you information today, not intellectual information that is appealing to your natural mind, but mm -hmm. to your conscience. Mm -hmm. I've tried to stir your conscience. Yeah, because that... that that, that, that is an interesting argument, for sure. Yeah, I've addressed sure. your conscience about moral issues so that yeah. you see you need to come to the Savior. So God doesn't want an intellectual decision from you. You know He exists. He wants you to repent of that sin. And the way to repent of sin is to appeal or listen to that God-given conscience, the judge, the impartial judge, on the courtroom of your mind. The conscience is like a smoke detector. If you don't want it to alarm you, take the batteries out. Well, it's very unwise. You could burn to death. And your conscience is a smoke detector. It tells you when you're morally in trouble. Mm -hmm. So listen to it. And that's what I've tried to appeal to today by going through those commandments. Does that make sense? My Jiminy Cricket, though, tells me that there isn't a God. Yeah, well, you've got a carnal natural mind that's enmity against God. Romans 8, verse 7. Read that. It says you're in a state of hostility towards God. Mm -hmm. And the reason you don't want God to exist is because you love your sins. That's what the Bible says. This is the way it puts it. Men love darkness more than light because their deeds are evil. Neither will they come to the light, lest their deeds be exposed. Mm -hmm. We're like thieves who stay away from the police. It's our moral state before God that makes us run from the light. We're like cockroaches. We don't want the light to come. But I've tried to give you light to say it's all coming on on Judgment Day and you're going to be exposed. Every secret sin, every sexual imagination, every deed done in darkness is going to come out. Jesus even warned every idle word a man speaks. So this is a fearful thing. I'm trying to say, hey... Tristan, come to your senses. Get up out of the pigsty. Get before God and say, I've sinned against you. Please forgive my sins. You going to think about this? I'll definitely think about it. You got a Bible? I do, actually. Uh, but but, but yeah, cause I don't know what's the right Bible to read because there's like 100 versions. And like I don't know. 
Well, there's versions for the Chinese, versions for the Russians, versions for English people, Old English, Plain English. So, but the best way to understand like the truest form of the Bible is to speak like like a, a Semitic language or something. Or what's the best way to go about that? Uh, Greek and Hebrew. But you don't want to get into that. Yeah, you're English speaking. Just get into the English. I would encourage you to read the Gospel of John, and I'm going to give you some literature and some stuff that will really help you. Is that okay? I'm down. Yeah, reading's cool. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for listening to me. I appreciate thank it. You. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Your name again is Ray. Ray. Thanks, Ray. I'll shake your hand. When the camera was turned off, I asked Tristan if I could pray for him, and he said, certainly. So I did. I prayed a very short and simple prayer, finished with amen, and I heard him say, wow, at the end. So evidently something was going on. Do you think you're going to get right with God? Yeah, I have definitely learned a lot today, and you've opened my eyes like to a new perspective, honestly. I'm going to give you some literature, and thank you so much for listening to me, Brittany. God bless you. Thank you. changed man. So what did you just say to me? Uh, there is a God. So you've changed your mind? Uh, for sure. So you're thinking deeply about what we talked about? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh that's wonderful. Thank you so much for telling me that. Your opportunity to me to think about things that I had a hard time coming to conceptualize until now. So that's so wonderful. Thank you again Mr. Mr. Comfort which is very fitting which is uncomfortably fitting.